He is the Word of God, a prophet, a servant. He is the bread of life, the shepherd and the lamb. He is the messenger. He is the humble king. He is the Son of God. He was rejected and abandoned. He was betrayed and condemned. He was mocked and beaten, bruised and pierced. He was crucified and buried. But the nails could not hold him. The cross could not finish him. The stone could not keep him. Death could not defeat him. He is our ransom and our redeemer. He is our deliverer and our refuge. He is mighty. He is glorious. He is holy and exalted. He is our Savior. Christ our Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Bethesda United Methodist Church. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Welcome all of you that maybe haven't been here in a little while. We're glad to see you and welcome to all of you that are here every single Sunday. Glad to see you too. Um, We want to begin with an opening prayer. Let us bow for a moment. O Lord, your wondrous birth means nothing unless we are born again. Your death and sacrifice mean nothing unless we die to sin. Your resurrection means nothing if you be risen alone. Raise and exalt us, O Savior, both now to the estate of grace and hereafter to the state of glory, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign. God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. You would worship with us. Thank you. 
seated. <clears throat> you notice that the sunrise service is on one side of your bulletin and the service for now is on the right side, okay? So don't get confused. We're over here. And I'm going to confuse you right now because we're going to do something that's not on here. Because I see um, some little children here. And oh, my elderly worship leader forgot what I just told him. <laughs> we are going to give you a message, young ones, all of the young ones here, and those of you that are young at heart perhaps the most important message you could get from this day. Please join us in singing, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know. y'all are here with us this morning. Today's scripture lesson comes to us from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 20, and it's the first 18 verses. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us bow for a moment of prayer. Gracious and almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. He is risen. Christ our Lord has risen today. Alleluia. Christ our Lord has risen today. Hallelujah. <laughs> we gather this morning to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It is for this reason that we gather every Sunday morning. Did you know that? Every Sunday morning we are remembering the resurrection. We come together to celebrate that resurrection every week. What does the resurrection mean to us? Jesus, who spent his life teaching and healing and reaching out to others, was unjustly persecuted and rejected. Yes, he had many people who loved him and followed him, but there were also some who were bothered by his presence in this world. His presence threatened their power and their authority, and so they persecuted him to the point of having him crucified, a torturous death. The people who loved Jesus deserted him or turned away from him at the end. But Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one, who God appointed to bring salvation to the world. God would not allow Jesus' death to be the last word. God resurrected Jesus from the dead. And through this mighty act, God forgave us for our sins. It was our sin that caused the death of Jesus. But God has forgiven us. And those who believe in Christ will attain bodily resurrection when God's kingdom comes in its fullness. In other words, believers go to heaven after death. But is that all that the resurrection is about? Do we celebrate Easter just because we're going to go to heaven after we die? Not according to scripture. There are three important things that we need to remember about resurrection. The resurrection, eternal life, and the kingdom of God are all things that are present right now and available for us to participate in right now. They were ushered into this world by the incarnation of Jesus by God. Resurrection is not something to look forward to after death, but is a gift given to us right now. And our response matters. Faith in Christ saves us. Faith alone. However, we reveal our faith in God by our response to his good works. What should our response be? Jesus' life was his response to God. Jesus showed us that our lives are our responses to God for the salvation that he has granted us. We do not achieve salvation by our good works, but faith without works is dead, according to James. In the letter of James, chapter 2, we are told, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but does not have works? Surely that faith cannot save, can it? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. We have only to look at the disciples and the faith community's response to the resurrection to see how we too should respond. 
They busied themselves with proclaiming the good news that as hard as the religious establishment tried, they could not do away with God's anointed one. Death and darkness do not reign. They busied themselves with providing for the widows and the orphans and with reaching out to non-believers and carrying hope, compassion, and new life to others. The resurrection made a difference in their lives and not just in their deaths. The resurrection was given to us for this life and not just for the life to come. That is what resurrection is. It is new life. If the resurrection does not change our lives right now, then we have not received it. He is risen. Today is Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate the light of Christ in our lives. Christ is the morning star, the day spring. The resurrection brought the dawn of new life to us. Our gospel lesson for today tells us that Mary the Magdalene went to the tomb when it was still dark. It was in the midst of the darkness that resurrection came. Just as God brought light into the darkness at the dawn of creation, so too light came into the world when the resurrection took place on that Saturday night before Sunday's dawn. As long as we strive to make our will be done, we remain in darkness. Mary saw that the tomb was opened, and she seems to have assumed that either the authorities have desecrated the grave by removing the body, or that grave robbers had stolen the body. Scripture tells us she runs in response to this discovery and alerts Peter and the beloved disciple. And then they run. They run to the tomb. So right off the bat, the discovery of the empty tomb causes action. Everyone is running in response. It is only when we respond to God's gift by seeking to live into the will of God that the true meaning of resurrection dawns on us and gets us moving. The two men find the clothes lying in the tomb as if Jesus had just passed right through them. This is pointed out to show the power of what has happened. Just two chapters earlier, Lazarus was raised and needed assistance getting out of his burial clothes. You remember that? Scripture tells us that the beloved disciple saw and believed. The identity of this disciple has long been a mystery to the faith community. Many scholars have said that it must be John himself who is the beloved one. But other more recent scholarship has lifted up an interesting possibility that I mentioned to you a couple weeks ago, but many of you have not heard that from me. What if the beloved disciple is Lazarus? Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and this caused such a stir that it actually precipitated the events leading to Jesus' death. The raising of Lazarus got the Jewish leaders afraid of what would happen if the Roman authorities found out there was a Jew raising the dead. They vowed to kill Lazarus and Jesus, and so it was no longer safe to even mention the name Lazarus. And it's only after this event is portrayed in John's gospel that we have the appearance of the beloved disciple. If Lazarus is indeed he, then we can understand in a profound way that he would have known what it meant when he saw those wrappings laying in that tomb. He would have definitely believed after seeing that. Peter and Lazarus went home. And Mary the Magdalene appears once again at the tomb. And it is she who experiences the first encounter with the risen Christ. Scripture says that she saw two angels in dazzling white. And they spoke to her and then she turned around and there was a man who she thought was the gardener 
And she asked, where is Jesus? Where had they taken him? It is astounding that the angels appear in dazzling white, and yet our risen Christ, our Savior, is mistaken for a gardener. Time and again, we try to set Jesus above, and he comes down to the lowest level. He gets down at the lowest level of human existence to be with people that he loves. He does not try to lord it over any of us. He gets down on our level. He loves the least, the last, and the lost. He is humble. He is never haughty. Mary recognizes Jesus when he calls her by name. And then he tells her not to hold on to him but to run and tell the disciples that he is going to his father and their father, his God and their God. His words to Mary are important words for us today. We must not hold on to Jesus. Just as Jesus said about Lazarus, unbind him and let him go, now we must not hold on to Jesus, keeping him to ourselves. We have been given Jesus to share. We must respond to Jesus' presence in our lives by telling others about him and by showing others in our acts of mercy. Nobody can argue with you if you tell them what Jesus has done for you in your life. Amen. How can anyone argue with that? You are witnessing what Jesus has done, the transformation he has given to you personally. A story like that helps people to come to Christ. I encourage you to talk in that way to others. And when we do acts of mercy, just going out and helping people, giving out a water bottle to someone, maybe those people that stand on the corners with signs, you know, have a water bottle in your car, give it to them. It's an act of mercy, right? And they will see Christ in your face. He is risen. There is a gifted teacher and preacher who has passed now. His name, Thomas Troger. Don't know if any of you have heard of him. But he tells about a man who from time to time had a drastic problem with water in his basement. Maybe some of you have had this problem from time to time. He tried everything to solve his problem, but just when he thought he had conquered it, it would rise up again. Finally, he called an engineer to come and assess the situation. The engineer said, the problem that you have is that there's an underground stream running under your house. And when the water table rises, the stream has nowhere to go but into your basement. He recommended digging down and allowing the stream room to flow right through the basement. That way the rest of the foundation and the walls would stay intact. The man tried it and it became the focal point of his home. The family was blessed by the peaceful sound of the babbling stream and it did not overflow again. How often do we strive to do what we think is right only to be striving against what God has in store for us? We can work against God, but it makes for a life full of conflict and upsetment, and we never really win. Or we can cooperate with God and live into the kingdom right now and enjoy the blessings of the resurrection. God has done a mighty act in resurrecting Christ. God did this for us, for you and me. We cannot achieve salvation on our own. We are lost in sin. It is only through the mighty act of God that we receive salvation, love, and forgiveness. 
God did this because God loves us and wants to be in right relationship with us. God is granting us new life in Christ, a life of peace and reconciliation, not rejection and division, a life where the community benefits from hearing every voice, not just a chosen few, a life of unity in the spirit, not cold aloofness, this gift of resurrection was available even to those who persecuted and hurt Jesus, and it is available today even to the worst sinner. God sends rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous, the repentant and the hard-headed. All we need to do is turn to God and receive new life. Our new life begins now. This life begins right now. Three things to remember about resurrection. It is available right now. It requires a response. And it is available to everyone. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for all sinners. And now... He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a joyful day in our church for so many reasons. We get to welcome some new members into our congregation. And I was asked last week, who are the new members that are coming in? And I said, you'll have to come to church on Sunday if you want to know. I've had several guesses from people who they thought it might be. But it is, some of you guessed right, it is Bill and Bonnie Yates. Would you like to come forward so they can see you? Bill and Bonnie were long time members. How many? Over 40 years at Haynes United Methodist Church. And unfortunately during COVID, they had to close. And so the memberships were transferred to Wesley. Um, but we're so glad that these folks came here, right? And so we're so glad to welcome them in. And just by coincidence, this past week, I've learned a whole lot of things. Like, I already knew from when we went caroling that we've got a singer up here. I told him he was going to have to sing a solo when he came up this time, but he, he didn't want to do that. But you know what else? We've got some serious painters landscape paintings oh my gosh do you do it too no ma'am <laughs> <laughs> cannot paint uh both jason you know jason and christy come also uh jason and his dad both paint and um, they're marvelous i mean really marvelous wonderful and you have three sons correct three sons. yes so we know joe and we know jason and then we've got Mike, right? Mike is the oldest. Okay. So. And two daughter-in-laws. Oh, wonderful. Melissa and Christy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Anything else you want us to know about you? Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed the services here. And we have been attending a good, good little bit. <laughs> and uh, everybody is so very friendly and... Uh, enjoy the sermons here and the music very much so Bill and I were in the choir many many years at Haynes wonderful well we are so glad to have you and you have a very easy um, answer to a question <laughs> as members of Christ Universal Church will you be loyal to this congregation and will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. 
Wonderful. And so, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith. Confirm their hope and perfect them in love. And now would you turn to page 43 in your hymn book so you can respond. It starts with, we give thanks. You got it? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. God bless you. So glad to have you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And now if the ushers would come forward, please. Today is uh, Handmade for Christ Sunday, uh, as well as being uh, Easter. And if you would like to come up and pray uh, anytime in remaining in the service, uh, feel free to come and uh, uh, pray over the blankets. No, uh, no power in the blankets, but there is love and uh, uh, prayers to our Lord in, in them. And if you could add some more, that would be great for the person who will be receiving them. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your love and kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could i 
morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no Gracious God, we pray that you receive our humble offering, multiply it and use it to the glory of your kingdom, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to the time in our worship service when we make our intercessory prayers for our others and loved ones. In our book, we have an unspoken. We have Caleb Covington, who has cancer. Um, it says son. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm so sorry. And for Gay Nell, and for the family of Earl Blanton, who passed away, and for Taylor Brisson. Uh, in addition to those, let's see what our bulletin says. Earl Blanton and family, Tony Crotz, Jenny Robertson, family of Peyton Riley Bryant, victims of tor tornadoes and school shooting, 
and another unspoken. And then Steve Atkins, Ann Brown, Wally Butler, Brandy Carter, Emma Carter, Mary Ruth Doby, Reed Everhart, Jim Hooker, who we're glad we have here with us this morning, Linda Jarvis, who we're glad we have here with us, Elaine Latham, Patsy Madron, Jack Marble, David McDaniel, Mary Alice Myers, we're glad we have her here with us, Sandra Nunn, Georgiana Ray, Frida Schof, hey Frida, Milton Wiesner, Doug Westbrook, Joe Whitman, and Shirley Younce. Any others that you would like to lift up? Are we good? I would add Lisa Reeves. Uh, to this, I think most people know she's having some hearing loss, which is really a thing to go through. Uh, some of you know all about that. Uh, Steve has, is still going through that. Um, very, very difficult thing. So I would lift her up to you. So if there are no others, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful for this day. What a joyous day it is, Lord. Oh, you are so good to us. It's unbelievable how good you are to us, how much you love us. We are so thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus. We're so thankful for the life that he lived here on this earth and that he willingly suffered and died a horrible death and overcame death and was resurrected. We just thank you and praise you so much for that, Lord. Unbelievable. And now we have this gift of forgiveness of our sins, and we have this gift of new life in Christ, and a pathway to live into your will and to live in a higher spiritual way. We thank you for that, and we ask that you would just continue to give us your vision and to guide us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come into the midst of all the things that we do and, and help us to think good thoughts, godly thoughts, and to speak words that you would have us speak and to take action that you would like for us to take in response to your wonderful gifts to us. Help us to know that everything we say and do is being heard and seen by you, and you are looking at it as a response to the gifts you've given us. Is it the response we want to give? We need to reflect on that and continue to strive to do better. Lord, as we come together, we know it's important to give you all thanks and praise. You are so good to us. And just keep remembering and thinking about all of the blessings that you give to us. And we know it's also important to give to you the things that cause us fear and doubt, worry and concern. Because those things can just get in our heads and our hearts and fill us up. And so then all of a sudden we're not thinking about anything except worry and doubt. And then when someone approaches us, we start telling them all our worries and fears and doubts. And that's not what we want to give to others. So we ask, Lord, that you would just help us to rest in our faith in you, knowing that all things are in your good hands and that we don't have to worry. Help us to just leave our worries and our concerns right here in this place. Leave them in your hands so that we might leave here with the good gifts that you're giving us of grace and peace and love, mercy and forgiveness. We lift up to you this morning all of those that we have named and all of those that are in our hearts that were left unnamed. You know who they are. You know the situations, Lord. Just help each person to feel your holy presence and to know how loved they are by you. Help us to go out through these doors with joy in knowing that you have conquered death, that you love us, that you are giving us all that we need. Help us to go with a spring in our step. So many good things happening. The blessing of having young ones here today, both 
little bitty young ones and also young ones that are preparing for their life, about to get married, all the wonderful things that come with that. Uh, we just ask for blessings on them, those that are getting ready to graduate from college, those that have just a little bit more time in college. What a blessing to have them here with us, Lord. We ask that you would continue to bless them. What a blessing to have new members joining our church. So wonderful. Help us to focus on all the wonderful things that you give to us, Lord. And now the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and we come to the time in our service when we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. Oh, good. I didn't know if I was going to be able to read it on the screen and I didn't want to be fumbling, but I think I can read that. So, <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us, to, brought us all to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we... Mm -mm. Praise your name and join in your, your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Oh boy. <laughs> holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. By your great mercy, you have, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light when the Lord Jesus ascended. He promised to be with us always in the power of your word and... And on this night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the power of your Holy Spirit. The church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, and so in remembrance of these your mighty acts and Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. That's the prayer for after. I know one thing that's missing is hand sanitizer. Steve has some. Thank you. And could I get my helper to come up too? The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the lifeblood of Jesus Christ. given for you, Todd. The blood of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ shed for you. The table is set. Come to the feast. Rick, do you want to direct people how to come? Okay. I'm a, okay. Do you all get that? <laughs> We're going to start with our worship leader. The body of Christ given for you, Devin. The body of Christ given for you, Adrian. Of Christ given the body for you, Chuck. The body for you, Jeremy. The body of Christ given for Joe. The body of Christ given for you, Bonnie.
Would you please join me in this prayer that you see on the screen? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So I think we just have a few announcements this morning. Um, the circles are meeting uh, April 11th, 13th, and 20th. If you are a female and would like to be a part of a circle and you're available at one of those times, I'm sure they would be happy to have you join them. There will be an administrative board meeting on April 16th at 7, and I believe there's a finance committee meeting just ahead of that, also, if you're on the Finance Committee, uh, look for a meeting on April 16th. The Young at Hearts will have a day trip on the 20th to Little Washington and Bath, and so you can sign up for that. I don't know if 15 have already signed up um, for the church bus. Does Dan know the answer to that? No. Nope. Um, but you're welcome to do that. and. Uh, then we've got the prayer concerns, so I think that was all the announcements. We will have our prayer uh, service on Tuesday, 9 o'clock. Please join us for that. And Oh, and if you don't know, we have this exciting thing on Sunday afternoons, pickleball. Come on out and play pickleball. What time are we doing that, 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock? Not today, because it's Easter, not today. But come next Sunday and play pickleball. You'll have fun. I guarantee it. Any other announcements? Yep. I would just like to see anybody that uh, you saw the office next week to uh, maybe say something special on uh, a photograph, photograph of our bulletin. One of those photographs has done a lot of work. It's very, very nice to see that. Mm -hmm. It is very beautiful. Take it away, Devin. All right. Go and stand.
now receive this blessing and benediction. Go forth in peace in the sure knowledge that he is risen. Glory, hallelujah. It is a wonderful day. Go with a spring in your step. Tell everyone you know what Jesus has done for you. Go in that. In Jesus' name, amen. Up from the grave here.